Hey guys, so today I'm going to be doing my April favorites. I have an absurd amount of products to show you guys. Makeup, um, skincare, nails. I actually have a lot of face products because recently I've kind of really switched up my foundation routine, concealers, things like that. Like a bunch of random favorites towards the end of the video. So if you guys want to stick around for that. Um, yeah, so I kind of just want to dive right in and update you guys on what's been going on with me as I go because I have so many products to show show so why don't we just go ahead and do that so starting off with some lip products that I just discovered fit together weirdly okay so starting off with some lip products um, I feel like I whenever I'm traveling I always just keep go-to colors with me because I don't do a lot of experimenting with my makeup when I'm traveling and I was traveling for the majority of April I think I was only home like 10 days out of the whole month I was in Atlanta a couple weeks ago for my best friend Renee's bachelorette party mm -hmm. and then um, I just got home from Denver I was there for a week for just fun reasons but um but this was definitely my go-to lip combo just for every day. This one is the Tarte Cosmetics. This is their limited edition Tartlet lipstick in ethereal pink. And this color is just the perfect pink. It's a little bit lighter. It's kind of an innocent lighter pink color, but it's not so, so light that it like washes you out completely. And I love the little like cardboard packaging on this one too. The other thing I love about this, it's super creamy, very more moisturizing. And I feel like because of the formula, it did make it really easy to apply. So I don't remember ever really needing a mirror to use this. And that kind of made it the perfect on the go lipstick. And and then on top of that, I would apply this gloss. So this is the Bare Minerals Marvelous Moxie Buttercream Gloss. This is really the only lip gloss I've worn all spring long. And the color that I like is Forbidden Nude. So it's just a really pretty pinky nude color. So then I also have two favorites that kind of are a little bit more on the daring, dramatic side of things. And it's going to sound crazy when I say that I have been loving gray lips, but... <laughs> It's true, something about it, I just love it. And I think it's when I'm using colors that are more like a grayish, kind of a gray and beige put together. So um, this one is MAC Lip Liner in, or MAC Lip Pencil in the color Stone. So this color is kind of like a grayish, brownish beige, and it's just so pretty. It's not so, so gray that it looks silver or something like that. Like it's a very... It still has that brown tone in it that keeps it a little bit earthy and I just think it is so, I don't know, so striking and so beautiful. I'll apply this onto my lips and then I'll apply, usually I'll do like MAC Myth lipstick on top of that and then this Sigma, these are called the Lip Vexes but it's the Sigma Lip Gloss and this one is in the color Hint and it really matches, um, doesn't look like it would match, but once you get it on your lips, these two colors match each other very well. They just play off of each other so well, and I love these Sigma glosses. They remind me a lot of the MAC lip glasses without being as sticky. It's the most beautiful color. It's like a gray, beige, mauve mix. So like I mentioned earlier, I have switched up a lot of my face products, and when I'm doing more of a glam face, this has been the foundation that I use. I cannot even tell you guys how obsessed with this foundation I am. I don't even know where to start because I love every single thing about this, including the packaging because it comes in a pump. Who doesn't love a pump? Okay, so this is a lot of words. It's the NARS All Day Luminous Weightless Foundation and the shade that I wear is Light for Deauville. Deauville. How'd I do? People from France. The texture of this is incredible. It is a feather, feather light feeling foundation on your skin. It is just so incredibly lightweight. It blends out like a dream. It just feels like a cloud on your face almost. It just blends out so, so well and easily. And it's, it's that full coverage look, but it doesn't feel super thick and you don't feel like you're tugging at your skin when you're applying it. It just has, and for such amazing coverage, it just has the most amazing lightweight feel to it. I also like the fact that it just looks radiant in any lighting situation. So even in natural daylight, it looks beautiful. It's not radiant in the sense that it's shiny. It just kind of has that lit from within glow to it. And oh, I just love this product so much. For days where I just want a little bit of a lighter makeup look, one product I've also been loving 
pause while I grab it over here. So this is the Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue. So this is a tinted hydrating gel cream and it's SPF 30 so it's your moisturizing step and your coverage all in one which saves time for me in the morning and you're meant to apply this with your fingertips which for me also just saves a little bit of time. I don't have to think about brushes. I just kind of slap it on and it's just really quick and easy. And then I have two concealers, a drugstore and high-end and this one is the Maybelline Master Conceal Camouflaging concealer. I love this so much. This is definitely one of the best drugstore concealers I've tried. It's really full coverage and the shade that I wear is Fair, which is actually a little bit light for me, but I always mix my concealers uh, together anyways. And I just love it. It's not quite as much coverage as the MAC Pro Longwear, but that's okay because I kind of mix it with that one a lot of times anyways. And it's still a ton of coverage, especially for a drugstore concealer. I think it's just amazing. I really, really like this. And then the NARS. I always mix up the name of this one. Radiant Creamy Concealer. I don't know why I always want to say Creamy Radiant Concealer, but the shade I wear is Light One Chantilly. And this is a crazy texture. It's almost like a dry... I want to say dry concealer. That sounds bad when you're talking about concealer, especially if you're talking about the under eye area, which is where I like to apply this. But it doesn't look dry or feel dry. It just has like a more of like a whipped consistency. When you blend it out, it just looks very luminous, very airbrushed. And I feel like this is almost just the concealer version of the NARS foundation, so clearly I love it. Then I have this Makeup Forever Pro Sculpting Duo, and there is two shades. I have the second one, which it doesn't say on here, but I believe the name of it is Golden. I love this thing. I think that from what I've seen online, the reviews online, I feel like you either love it or you hate it. And I think one thing people are running into is they're thinking that this top color right here is meant to be a bronzer, so I really don't feel like this is meant to be a bronzer. I think this is truly meant to be a sculpting duo with a highlighter and a contour color. The darker shade is actually a lot softer on the skin than it looks like it would be in the pan. For me, I love it. I think it works perfectly because a lot of times I have to use a lighter contour color anyways. Uh, and then the highlighter is just absolute gorgeousness. It's like this honey, amber, golden shade. It is so, so beautiful. It's not quite as light as like the Moonstone Highlighter by Becca or uh, Mary Luminizer by The Bombs. And in that same kind of vein, I guess I want to talk about this, another highlighter from Becca because let's face it, I'm addicted to them. So this one is called Opal and this is so gorgeous. It's actually pretty similar to the highlighter in the Makeup Forever Duo. Um, this one's kind of more of a rose gold though I would say, but it's the same like depth to it. It's not the super super light stripe on your cheekbone. It's not quite that light. So I think that if you're getting tanner, um, this would be a great one. Or if you have a deeper skin tone, this would be perfect. And again, I've been using it and I'm not so super duper tan so it is pretty versatile and it's just so so gorgeous I really really love it a lot again it's like a shimmery rose gold you know we love that and then I have my favorite blush combo to show you guys I don't know why I always wear two shades and everything two concealers two different colors for my eyebrows two different color blushes almost every single day I don't know why wear one color when you can wear two um first I like to apply this blush by MAC. This is one of their mineralized blushes in the color Warm Soul. I've had this forever and it always just kind of resurfaces in my makeup organizer and I kind of fall in love with it again. And actually I like this one. I like it this time more than I used to. Um, I didn't used to be super crazy about this but now I don't know why I'm really really loving it. It's like a dusty peach with a subtle golden shimmer to it and it's not like shimmery shimmer. Um, <laughs> it's more just a glowy shimmer but it's just so so beautiful beautiful. So I put that on my cheeks first as kind of a little base color and then I always like to do a little bit more of a vibrant color towards the front and blend it in. I have been using this one by Milani. So this is their rose powder blush in the color Tea Rose and it's beautiful and I think the combination of that really warm color with this one which is more of um I don't know, just a rose color is really, really nice, and I love that this is so vibrant. It is a matte finish, and it's just insanely pigmented. And then I wanted to mention the Tartlet Palette by Tarte Cosmetics. I don't think I've mentioned this in a favorites before. I've shown it in a ton of videos because I just, I love it so much. I'm going to be honest. Sometimes companies, like, 
skimp on the quality of their limited edition products because they just have to keep cranking them out every single season. So, you know, sometimes they're going to cut corners, this and that. I feel like Tarte eyeshadows are always consistent. They're just always pigmented. They have that same really soft, velvety texture to them, and they're just always very consistent and very, very nice. Likewise with the Tartlet palette. So this is funny because this is an all matte palette featuring a lot of cool tones. If you would have showed me this a year ago, I would have been like, what do I do with that? But I have been really getting more into cool tones. I know, who am I? And also matte colors. And I feel like I owe a lot of that to this little palette. It really got me to branch out and try some different colors and different combinations and things like that. So really, really love these colors. And you can see just the gradient from light to dark and how they all look like they would work really well together, and they do. So love that one. Because it's spring, I've really lightened up my makeup looks and my skincare products I've been using. So this one is really great. This is the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Water Gel. And this is like just enough hydration that my skin needs. So it doesn't feel heavy or greasy. It really doesn't feel like you have anything on your skin except for the fact that your skin doesn't feel dry and tight or anything like that. Um, because I think because the air isn't quite as dry anymore, my skin isn't really that dry at all. So this is just what I need. And also another little accessories tidbit I wanted to show you guys. So when I got to Atlanta, I was walking around with Renee. We were kind of shopping and things like that. It was really sunny. I opened my sunglasses case and <gasps> it was empty. I forgot my sunglasses. Who forgets their sunglasses when you go to Georgia? This girl. So anyways. I popped into one of the little stores and they had the most adorable Sunnies and I think you can also find this brand which is called Kimono. You can, I think Urban Outfitters also sells these brand sunglasses but um, I had been wanting to get the like a shape similar to this like a tortoise shell that's a cat eye but it's still kind of squared off on the outer edges. Um, I wanted a style that was very similar to this for a while, but it was a lot more expensive than these. So I'm glad I, I'm really glad I found these, and I just really love them a lot. Um, now these have that super reflective surface, so even if you like lightly touch it, you get a smudge mark on it, which kind of stinks. But I just keep a little lens cleaner in there with it at all times. But I just love these things. Okay, moving on. What else we got for you? Oh, nails. So as you can probably see, I do have different nails going on right now. Um, these are acrylics. Every couple years, I just get acrylics. It's not like, a, it's just a weird thing that happens. But I've been obsessed with white nails. I love white nail polish right now, but I have a little bit of a dilemma because this was one of the professional colors she used on me, and I don't remember what exactly it was. And this is one that I've been wearing by Essie. Um, called Blanc, but it really chips within like 24 hours, so I need your guys' help. If you could let me know a good white nail polish, um, please leave it in the comments below because I'm just obsessed with white nails right now and I need a really, really good polish so I can repaint them on my own. As for a few personal favorites, I never really listened to audiobooks or anything like that before. It's never really been my thing. Um, and no, this is not a an audible commercial. But recently I really got into podcasts. Like I've always loved listening to talk radio. My whole life I've always listened to lots of talk radio. So I like to hear people talking. Like it's just, it really entertains me, especially when you've gone through your whole playlist of recent songs that you love and you've listened to, you know, your playlist like 25 times and you're like, uh, you just wanna like switch it up a little bit. It's really nice to listen to podcasts. And the first one that really got me hooked was Serial. I was probably the last person on the face of the planet to listen to that, but I was so addicted to it. I listened to all 12 episodes in two days. Yeah, I was really into that one, and when it was over, I, I'm not even kidding, I didn't know what to do with myself. I just felt like I had this hole in my heart, like I didn't know what to do. And so I discovered Criminal, which is a really great podcast, and also Radio Lab, which if you go on your little uh, apps, I mean, I'm sure... Like I said, I just figured all this out. I'm sure you guys know, like, if you go on your uh, podcast app on your iPhone, um, just go to the most popular podcasts, and they'll probably, all three of those will pop right up. But I'll link to the actual websites if you want to listen to them on a computer down below. Um, so Criminal and Serial are more like 
uh, murder, mystery, like crime stories, and they're not boring to me. I don't know. You'd think it would be boring, but they're just very captivating and interesting, and I feel like you learn a lot by listening to them, too. Learning is always good. And speaking of my phone, I just wanted to mention this phone case, too. Um, I got this from a website, and I cannot pronounce the name because it's really hard for me to say. I want to say Caseify, but that's not how you say it because there's a T in there, so it's like Case. I don't know how to say it, but they have the cutest phone cases ever. So I really love this one. It's kind of like a mandala design and really, really cool. And it's transparent so you can still see the gold on my iPhone through it. Yeah, I'll link to that down below. So yeah, that's pretty much it for all all of my favorites from the month of April. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and sorry if I was just like talking off the chain but I just had so much to say so I love you guys thank you so much for checking out this video and as always thank you for watching and supporting my channel and I'll see you very soon in my next one bye guys